Greetings and salutations, dreamers in dreamland. Welcome to the latest edition of Listen to Me. Listen to Me, Volume 11. And I am your host with the most coming at you from coast to coast. Bobby Dream from around the world. Say hello to your girl. A lot of news in the sport of boxing. There hasn't been a lot of fights recently. We haven't really had a fight since Garcia and Campbell back on the 2nd of January. However, there's a lot of news in the sport of boxing and a lot of things that uh, I want to speak about and touch upon today. I want to begin with Canelo Alvarez. Now, Canelo Alvarez, top pound for pound fighter in the world today in the world in the sport of boxing, period. Canelo Alvarez is number one. His next fight is really not something to brag about. It's not something to write home to your mother about. Canelo versus Avni Yildirim. Now, Avni Yildirim, all respect to him, the guy has done what it takes to earn his shot at the title, so to speak, world-class fighter, uh, but not exactly the guy uh, who a lot of people are going to take stock in or bet on to beat Canelo Alvarez. Uh, to be honest, I see Canelo stopping Avni kind of early in the fight, I'd say before the half. Uh, but, uh, you know, however, Avni earned his shot, and, you know, at the end of February, they're going to fight, and that's going to be great. However, let's be honest. More than likely, Canelo is going to win that fight in a one-sided fashion. That's likely what's going to happen. So, I'm going to propose the question now. Who in the world, in the sport of professional boxing, can knock out Canelo Alvarez? Who? Because I don't see Canelo losing a decision for the rest of his career. This is not new news. This is not a new narrative. This is the way it's been. Think back to Canelo versus Floyd Mayweather, okay? When Floyd Mayweather and Canelo fought uh, six years ago or whatever it was, you know, it was quite some time ago, Canelo was only 22 or 23 years old. Uh, he had not really hit the prime of his career and he had not become the top star, the top draw in the boxing world, the top money-making guy in boxing that he is today. Today, Canelo Alvarez is the top draw, the top money-maker in all of boxing, period, bar none. He's the money guy. So, yes, he is going to get a favorable look on the cards, but this is not new. This has been going on since he fought Floyd Mayweather. He didn't win one, or, he didn't win one not two rounds of that fight against Floyd Mayweather. Yet, miraculously, one of the judges scored that fight a draw. One of the judges found six rounds of that fight that Canelo Alvarez won. You can go back and watch that fight. There's not one or two rounds that Canelo Alvarez clearly wins. Not one or two, yet he was afforded a draw. Even more recently, the first Triple G fight a couple years ago was scored a draw. It was a close fight. I felt that Triple G won seven or eight rounds of that fight. Uh, I felt you could have found four, maybe five rounds that Canelo won. However, the one judge that scored it for Canelo Scored at 118 to 110, I believe, for Canelo. Meaning, Canelo won 10 rounds of that fight, and Triple G won 2 rounds of that fight. Let me tell you, you can go back and watch that fight a thousand times. A thousand times. And a thousand times out of a thousand, you're not going to tell me that Triple G only won 2 rounds of the first Triple G versus Canelo fight. It's not true. It's not true. It's lies. So, all in all, Canelo Alvarez, historically, has gotten favorable looks by the judges. He's got favorable looks on the cards. He's gotten the A-side, you know, slant in his, in his favor. That's, that's the way the deck has been stacked, in his favor. So, I don't see Canelo Alvarez losing a decision for the rest of his career. That's not just my opinion. That's not some story that I made up. That's the way it looks. That's the opinion of a lot of boxing uh, you know, fans, pundits, media, whatever you want to call them, whatever you want to call us. The general opi uh, opinion of the boxing world is that Canelo will never lose a decision again for the rest of his career. That being given, who can knock out Canelo Alvarez? Now, currently in boxing, now it could be someone from the future, someone, you know, you know on the horizon, an up-and-comer, maybe, but in the current state of boxing today, outside of the heavyweight division, because let's face it, you know, a heavyweight, an Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, a Deontay Wilder even, someone that weighs 250 pounds, they have a chance to knock out a much smaller man like Canelo, but let's be realistic, those, are, those fights are never going to happen, Canelo's not a heavyweight, he's never going to be a heavyweight, however, Canelo has competed as high as 175 pounds at light heavyweight, 
and where Canelo competes is in the area between 160, 168, which he's currently competing at, which he's currently the unified champion of 168 and 175. Now at 175, he beat Sergey Kovalev. He did take the low-hanging fruit, and he did become the WBO World Light Heavyweight Champion. Spectacular, incredible, incredible accomplishment. However, there is someone at 175 who goes by the name of Artur Beterbiev. That's right, Artur Beterbiev. However you want to say it, Artur Beterbiev. I believe that Russian has an opportunity, has a chance, has, has the ability to possibly knock out Canelo Alvarez. Let's face it, every single opponent he's been in the ring with to date, he's knocked out. He's won all of his professional fights by knockout. The last opponent he was in the ring with, uh, or maybe not his last opponent, but when he fought Vojic, when he beat Alexander Vojic, okay? Vojic is a guy who went up there to Montreal, who went up there to Canada, and he not only stopped Adonis Stevenson, but he put him in a coma. He put him in a coma for something like a week, and Adonis Stevenson, while he has since recovered, thank God, you know, he still is affected by that fight. He's still feeling the effects, and he will be for the rest of his life. So Better Biev has already went in there with someone who's very dangerous in Vojic, Alexander Vojic. He retired Vojic, who to that point was undefeated. Alexander Vojic, who was trained by the legendary Teddy Atlas, okay? An incredible, uh, you know, champion, the lineal champion, light heavyweight champion, and Better Biev went out there and stopped that guy. Stop that guy cold in his tracks. And I'm not saying that Better Biev is a given to beat Canelo. But out of all the boxers in the world today, if there's anyone that's going to beat Canelo, they're going to have to knock him out. And if there's anyone that's going to knock him out, I think it's Better Biev. Now, I do believe that Better Biev, being 37, 38 years old, you know, there's a chance that Canelo can knock him out. Absolutely. Better Biev is getting along in the tooth. You know, he has had some tough fights. The the fight with Callum Johnson was a tough fight. The fight with Vojic was a tough fight. So all in all, Better BF is nearing the end of his career. However, if there's anyone in all of boxing between 160 and 175 currently that I, that I would really, you know, give a chance, a 50-50 shot to knock out Canelo, I'd say it's Arthur Better BF. Outside of that, I don't see anybody. Maybe Joe Smith Jr., Maybe Joe Smith Jr., if he could get the fight, maybe, maybe he's got what it takes too, but, you know, and I, I Joe Smith Jr., one of my favorite fighters, I respect him, but, uh, you know, outside of Archer Betabiev, I really, you know, not too many guys, you know, that's it. I think the, the guy with the best chance to knock out Canelo Alvarez is Archer Betabiev. Now, moving on, uh, Gary Russell Jr., I mean, this guy is absolutely delusional. I don't know what the guy is, is thinking or what he's talking about. The guy's an incredible fighter. But he was on uh, the Last Stand podcast with Brian Custer. And Gary Russell Jr., I, I don't know if he's clout chasing or name dropping, but he mentioned the names of everyone in boxing from uh, Leo Santa Cruz, who he's been on the same side of the street with for years, can't get a fight with to Tank Davis, to Tyson Fury, to Deontay Wilder, to uh, Sean Porter, to Terrence Crawford, to Errol Spence. The point is, he's been naming all these guys and dropping all these names, saying that he has more skill than all of them. Saying that he's clearly more skilled than all of these more accomplished fighters. Guy, and these guys that he has no intent to fight. He's calling out Crawford, says he has an intention to fight the guy. Terrence Crawford camp campaigns at 147 pounds. Gary Russell Jr. campaigns at 126. It's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. There is no state athletic commission in the United States, and I, I would venture to say on this planet, that would sanction that fight. They could fight in a bar somewhere, sure. They could fight in an unsanctioned match in Singapore, great. No one's going to watch it. No, one, no, no titles will be on the line. It's not going to do anything for anyone's legacy. And it's not going to happen. It's unrealistic. And Gary Russell Jr., someone asked him, 
They proposed the question. Does being this inactive, because everybody knows Gary Russell Jr. fights one time a year. It's WBC mandatory and that's it. That's it. That's it. He has looked for bigger fights, maybe. But he hasn't had any luck and he fights once a year. So at the end, at the end of the day, Gary Russell Jr., someone asked him, does being inactive, are you concerned that that may diminish your skills? And Gary Russell Jr.'s words out of his own mouth as a rebuttal were, I sparred my little brother the other day. I stay active. I sparred my little brother the other day. I stay active. Do you know how stupid that sounds? Do you know how ridiculous that is? Gary Russell Jr. just equated sparring his little brother, sparring his little brother, to staying active on a world level as a world champion of boxing. He equated staying active in boxing to sparring his little brother. Th those were Gary Russell Jr.'s words on Brian Custer's podcast. Those were the words, not from the horse's ass, from the horse's mouth. What's the difference? When the words are that stupid, what is the difference? Gary Russell Jr. is an incredibly talented fighter. And hand speed wise, excellent. Excellent hand speed. Overall skill, he's a pretty skilled fighter. He's not the most skilled fighter in the world. He's not. And his resume doesn't prove otherwise. And until we see Gary Russell Jr. go out there and beat someone in the ring, not spar his little brother, then it's completely irrelevant. Now, moving on to someone else who's becoming irrelevant, who, be, who may have became irrelevant by the way he acted when he was... A pound-for-pound pound sweetheart, possibly number one in the world, by the way he acted when he was the unified lightweight champion of the world. And I'm talking about Vasily Lomachenko. Nobody wants to play with Vasily Lomachenko. Teofimo Lopez stated recently on numerous podcasts, uh, Akin Barak being one of them, uh, I believe he said it to Chris Mannix as well, he has no intention, Teofimo Lopez has no intention of giving Vasil Lomachenko a rematch. Because Vasil Lomachenko would not have given Teofimo Lopez a rematch. And because Vasil Lomachenko didn't want to recognize Teofimo Lopez until Teofimo Lopez became a champion. Now, Teofimo Lopez, he went the hard road. He went the hard way. He went through Richard Coleman. He didn't send an email to be a champion. And I'm not taking away from what Devin Haney did. But Teofimo Lopez went the hardest road traveled. He went the hard way. He beat Richard Comey. He stopped that guy in the ring. Richard Comey, to that point, had only lost very close fights. And in some opinions, may have never lost. He lost a fight on the road in Russia, which I can't... I, I watched the fight a few times. I I'm not sure if it was Russia or another European country, but he was on the road. And he was definitely corrupt. Even the crowd booed when the uh, decision was read, when Richard Comey lost that fight. And Richard Comey lost to Robert Easter. Uh... On a PBC card, I believe, and it was a split decision, or a majority. It was a close fight. Regardless, Richard Comey was a dangerous, dangerous animal. A dangerous animal. Teofimo Lopez went out there, and he stopped that guy. He bounced that guy off the canvas with one of his knockdowns. Comey got up, fell into the referee, stumbled, and barely made it to his feet, and then he got stopped on the ropes in what looked like 100 unanswered punches. I know it wasn't 100, but Teofimo Lopez hit that guy with a barrage of punches that looked like the Flash. It was unreal power and speed against a real world-class guy, a world champion in Richard Comey, a guy from Africa, a real tough guy, you know, who went, you know, above and beyond to become a world champion himself, was living and training in the Bronx at the time. You know, Richard Comey is a guy who's, you know, a, a, one of my personal, you know, favorite fighters to watch, you know, still is a guy I like to watch. Richard Comey fights hard and... Tiafimo Lopez went out there and stopped that guy, right? And that was the only way Tiafimo Lopez was able to get recognition from Vasily Lomachenko to get that fight. So he doesn't want to give Vasily Lomachenko a rematch. Now, there is a way. There is a way that Vasily Lomachenko could make himself relevant. He could become mandatory. Or he could become the WBC champion. The WBC belt that... Devin Haney holds, not the franchise title or the designation that Teofimo Lopez has that he attained when he beat Lomachenko. 
No, the actual WBC champion, Devin Haney. The only problem is, Onak and Barak, Devin Haney said he does not want to fight Vasily Lomachenko. Why? Because when Devin Haney was coming up, m making his bones, and taking steps towards Vasily Lomachenko, taking steps towards becoming the WBC interim, the WBC mandatory, fighting the WBC eliminators, Vasily Lomachenko didn't even say Devin Haney's name. Wouldn't give them, wouldn't give Devin Haney the respect of even acknowledging, <clears throat> excuse me, acknowledging him as an opponent, a possible opponent, acknowledging Devin Haney as a contender. So, so Devin Haney, when asked about a possible fight with Vasily Lomachenko, he said, you know what, when I was coming up, he showed me no respect. He wouldn't even say my name. When he was talking about Javante Davis and Tiafimo Lopez or other possible fights, he wouldn't even say my name. Wouldn't even give me that much respect. So Devin Haney wants no part of Vasily Lomachenko. And we know Ryan Garcia and Tank Davis. We already know Tank Davis. He clout chased Vasily Lomachenko. He don't want no part of that fight. And he wants absolutely no part of that fight now because what does Vasily Lomachenko have to offer Tank Davis? Tiafimo Lopez already beat him. He already beat Vasily Lomachenko. So the, you know, the luster of beating this, you know, pound for pound sweetheart is gone. And he has no championships. Vasily Lomachenko currently holds zero, holds no, holds a donut's worth of championships. No titles, no belts. So what does Tank Davis want from him? A hard night out there? It's, win, lose, or draw, it's going to be a hard night against Vasily Lomachenko. It ain't going to be an easy fight. It's not. So Tank Davis ain't running in that direction. And, and we already know what Ryan Garcia wants. Ryan Garcia wants the Tank Davis fight. Maybe Ryan Garcia wants, you know, the Tiafimo Lopez fight down the road. Maybe he wants to fight Devin Haney for the WBC title. But what Ryan Garcia wants next is Tank Davis. And what Tank Davis wants next is Ryan Garcia. Now, uh, Tiafimo Lopez was supposed to fight George Cambosis down there in Australia, his mandatory. However, with the travel bans, Tiafimo Lopez did, uh, of his own admission, this past week, he did say he may be fighting Devin Haney next. So if Haney is fighting Lopez, and if Haney's not fighting Lopez, Lopez, uh, uh, Lopez is fighting Cam Cambosis, Haney don't no want no part of Lomachenko, and Garcia and Tank are fighting each other, who in the world is Vasily Lomachenko going to fight next? Who? Who is Vasily Lomachenko going to fight? You know, there's an old saying, uh, I don't, I don't remember exactly how it goes, but you got to be careful who you step on on your way up, because going down is going to be just as hard. And Vasily Lomachenko might have found that. I mean, he might be finding that out the hard way, because all those people and all those bridges he burned and all those people he pissed on on the way up to the top of his mountain. Guess what? Now that he fell off the top of that mountain, they're not, they're, they're not reaching out to him. They're not throwing him a line. And in fact, they're pissing right back on him. So dreamers in dreamland, until we meet again, it's been a pleasure. Yours and not mine. <laughs> I love each and every one of you. Not nearly equal. Until we meet again. Peace.